All right, how you doing? So in this video, what we're going to go over is how to create a multi-panel graph in R. Now, multi-panel graph is something that you'll see quite a bit in the academic literature. And really what it is, is where you have one figure with multiple graphs in it. And as an example, so we're on the same page with what we're trying to create. And again, this is an example that I created and published once upon a time. So here's a paper of mine, and here we can see a basic multi-panel figure here, where you can see there are three graphs. In this instance, they happen to be oriented, oriented horizontally, and you have graph A, graph B, graph C, and then one figure caption for all three graphs is all figure one, and then there's one overall description in the caption, and then each graph gets its own little um, description. So A is the mean and difference points plus or minus SEM plot as a function of delay. And then B happens to be all of this. And then C, and then you denote all your symbols. So this is what we're going to be trying to create in R. And we're going to focus on just how you create a multi-panel graph, be it horizontally, like this example was, or vertically, like this one, and you can also do a grid as well, depending on how much data you need to visualize. So without further ado, let's get into the coding, okay? Now how this will essentially run is we'll have to pull up the ggplot library, create a couple simple graphs, and then we'll use something called the grid extra library and the function grid arrange to actually create our paneled figure. Now the data that I'm using is essentially a bunch of random numbers that are structured like an experiment. So two groups um, between such experiments. So ID, this is just the ID number. Condition, this is a factor one or two that's going to correspond to our independent variable. And then four different dependent variables um, just to give us some data to play with so that we can actually look at something. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go through this outline over here. So, first thing we need to do is pull up that library for ggplot2. And then we need to go about creating individual ggplots. So, graph1 is what I'm going to call it. And then I need to use the ggplot function, specify my data, and then set the aesthetics. And I want my x to be my independent variable, which is condition in this data set. And then I want my y to be my dependent variable, and we'll go dv1 to start, okay? Now, let's run that through real quick to make sure everything is going how we want. So we can see we created our dependent variable on the y-axis, condition on the x-axis, so all our coding there is working out. Now, oftentimes at this point, you would put a plus sign here. But we don't actually want to do that if we need to create a multi-panel figure. We actually have to come up and put our plus sign here and then add these different layers. So in this case, what I'll actually be doing first is adding my bars to represent the mean. So stat, oh, let's see if I can type today, summary, and then I want a function of y, and I want that to be the mean. And the geome that I want to use to represent it is a bar. All right, those came up correctly. So now let's add some other little parameters to make it look nice. Fill equals white and color equals black. We'll go with a nice classic look. Okay, so now let's get our air bars. So now let's knock the width down on those. Now, if what I'm flying through right now is confusing you, there are other videos on how to actually just create a ggplot. I'm assuming you have this knowledge at this point. Okay, so we've created a basic graph. However, one of the things we'll need in our multi-panel figure are a specific letter tag to identify the graph by. So the code that we're going to use to use this is actually a something I haven't really gone over yet in my videos. So we want the labs function, and we've often used this to specify that x is the IV, and 
y is our dv. But there is another element that you can add here called a tag. In this case, we want this to be a. So what this is going to do is it's going to create this a right here in the top left-hand corner, such that we can identify this as figure a, per se. Now, the last thing that I'll do for this is add a theme such that it looks clean and professional. So we've created our first graph. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and copy and paste this code because it's already working and make slight modifications so we have four graphs to play with. Okay, so graph one, and now we're going to go graph two with dv2, and we're going to change our tag to b, create graph b, graph two, excuse me. So there we have b, and we will do this again, only now we're going to go three, three, Make sure that went well. Yep, now we got a graph C. And now we need our fourth graph that we're going to look at. So it's just DB4 and then tag ABCD. All right, so now we have four different graphs that we can work with here. So now is when we need to actually use this new library. So this library is grid extra. Oop, typo. Grid extra. OK, now, obviously, if you've never used this package before, you would need to do install packages first. But I've already done that, so I'm not going to worry about that. Matter of fact, I'm even going to go ahead and comment out this code so I can't accidentally run that. So we've called up the library. Now the function that we need to use is something called grid arrange. And what we do for grid arrange is for these arguments, what we actually need to do is specify the graphs that we want to graph. So graph 1, graph 2, graph 3, graph 4. So those are our four graphs. And then we need to enter the argument n row. Okay. So let's say we want an n row of 2. Could not find the function grid arrange. Did I have a typo? Let's see. I might have had a typo. Let's try this again. We'll go end row one. Makes sense. Start at the bottom. So what you can see here is that we have one row, and all of our graphs are lined up one after the other with one row. If we did an end row of two, this should give us a nice grid. We could do an end row of three, but I'm not sure how that'll work out with four graphs. We'll see how it goes. It just doesn't like me very much. And then an end row of four, where you then have everything in a completely vertical orientation. Okay, so end row specifies the number of rows. Now, the one that I liked the most was actually end row two. So let's go back and go with this. Okay, and this exports just like a normal figure. So let's just copy this to the clipboard to make life simple for us. And I actually like that ratio a little bit. So let's go ahead and copy this plot. And let's um, go ahead and pull up a Word document here. And so we can look at this figure, and center it if we wanted to. And then you would then go about specifying all the different um, parts of your figure at this point. So with the new now seventh edition of APA style, what does this look like? 
I always like to center line it for 60. So that's not how it goes anymore. So figure one, and then we'll go italics and we need to fold off. Um, example, panel, figure, and then it's not a caption anymore, it is a note. Example, panel, figure, to demo, straight, it, for students, a, first, dependent, variable, graph, as, mean, oop, too far, and then, symbols, plus or minus, SEM um, as a function of the ID. Now you would go through and do this for B and C and D. And this way you can get all your graphs inside of just one figure. And it's a little cleaner, it's a little more efficient. And when you do this, ideally you want to group related data together. So Let's go back to that example in the literature that I had showed you before. So here is my paper. In this graph, and I realize this may not uh, click for everyone, but this is all the delay discounting data. So there's one figure that has all the data from the delay discounting task. And then when it comes to, say, the alcohol consumption data, all the alcohol consumption data is together. And then when it comes to all the alcohol seeking or repetitive data, all of that data is together. So that you can group related data together so that you can get a better picture of how everything links together. You don't want to group disparate types of data per se. Well, I hope this helps you with multi-panel figures and graphs. Um, yeah, good luck.